Hello everyone, I'm Jade. We're talking about commonly mispronounced words today in this pronunciation lesson. Um, no, pronunciation lesson. So um, I'm going to mention words that people say in the wrong way sometimes, maybe because they're not easy to read these words or um, maybe because um, you've a lot of people say them wrong, therefore you learn to say them in a way that's wrong. Um, the first things we're going to look at are not words, they're letters. Um, and I tell, I'm telling you this because I've mentioned this before in videos that sometimes in Britain you're judged. You, no, you're always judged by your language in Britain. Um, so when you say these letters, some people will listen to how you say those letters and they'll judge you if you say it in the wrong way, like, oh, you're not educated or, oh, that's very common, as in um, not being, having the right parents and the right kind of background. So um, the first letter, a lot of people say H with a H huh sound, but um, according to people who decide these things, um, you're not meant to say H, you're meant to say it without it, H, according to them. So there you go. And um, what about this letter? How do you say this letter? Do you say W? Well, this one's meant to be double U. So we're going to cross those ones out. Um, moving on. Some of them are tricks because the verb for this is pronounce, we pronounce words, but when we say the noun, it changes, it becomes pronunciation. And I've had people um, say things to me in my videos before, oh, you're saying that word wrong. Well, <laughs> no, no, I know that I'm not, you're wrong, okay? I know you're wrong, trust me on that one. So now you know, okay? You can do that to other people when they tell you you're wrong because it's like you've got, when someone does that, you can say you've got egg on your face, okay? You're wrong because you tried to tell me I was wrong, but in fact, you were wrong. Now you've got egg on your face. So anyway, pronunciation. Um, this one, um, it's a hard word to spell. So I can hear creative, this is, would, wouldn't be a native speaker on this one. Um, creative interpretations of this word, let's say that, usually like tangu or something. Sounds like a game that you can play, but tangu is not right. It's tongue. It's a bit rude, I'm not going to do that in my video. Um, looking at this word now, height. I think this one breaks our expectations, you could say, because the other words related to it, um, width, length, have the th sound, width, length. This one, spelt the same way, doesn't have the same sound. So it should be height, height, not height. A lot of people say height, wrong, right, height, with a t. So it's the exception, it doesn't, doesn't go with width or length. Are there any others? Depth. Depth. Oh, that's hard for me to say. Depth. Too hard for me to say. Looking at the next word now, a non-native a non mistake. Suit. Suit. Some people say sweet. Sweet. All kinds of wrong pronunciations for that one. Thing to remember there is it's the long U sound, ooh, suit, suit. Then it seems like there are a lot of issues with the P words in pronunciation. These words here, I'll talk about them together because it's the same issue, prescription, prerogative. They're spelt P-R-E, both of them, but the first Syllable sounds like this. Uh, well, actually, prescription, but a lot of people say it like this, prescription. And I think that happens because they're, 
they're putting the stress in a different place. They're putting the stress here and making that a schwa prescription. Okay, so a lot of people say that. And a lot of people would say prerogative. Not necessarily because they don't know how to spell the words, but because that to them is a schwa. But anyway, the, the stress is meant to be on the second syllable in those words. So it should be like prescription and prerogative. Prescription is um, when, you, when you go to the doctor and you need some medicine, the doctor will give you a prescription and you can go and get your medicine. Uh, prerogative, that's a difficult word, it might not be something you know. Um, it's sometimes used in a phrase, that's your prerogative. And it basically means that's your decision. You can decide and do what you want. It's quite a, quite a, um, a formal word. And it means something that is your decision to make. Okay. You're allowed to make that decision. That's your prerogative. Um, the next one is a confusion between two almost identical words. Um, the first one is prostate and the second one is prostrate. So the difference is the R here. But people confuse these words a lot because um, prostrate is a formal word for uh, to, to lie down or to be lying down. Um, formal. Whereas uh, prostate is the sort of medical word for um, male balls, basically. Um, so some, like a man can get prostate cancer. Um, but many people say, talk about prostate cancer. They put the R in there because they're confused. So yeah, this one, just remember, is associated with men and it's a medical word and there's no R, so it should be prostate with no R sound. What happens when you go to the coffee shop in English speaking country? Do you ask for an espresso or do you ask for an, um, I'm running out of space, I don't, maybe I don't need to write it, espresso. A lot of people do the pronunciation with X, espresso, I want an espresso but it's more elegant to um, pronounce this word with the S, espresso, espresso. And looking at the last word in the list here, business is that word, but sometimes people are confused by the I in there. And if you're the kind of person who pronounces words based on just what you see, which would make sense actually, um, I can see why you're doing that, but it's not, Buzziness. Sometimes hear buzziness. Let's get down to buzziness. Doesn't sound very good. Um, here's a little list of the most commonly pronounced, commonly mispronounced silent letter words in English. So I get in situations sometimes with, actually I don't, I don't correct people outside of uh, lessons. If, if, someone I know in my personal life has asked me to correct them. If they make a mistake, I will. But in general, I don't, I don't correct people because it can be impolite. So, so often, even with like really, really, really advanced speakers of English who like speak English all the time in their lives, basically, because they've been speaking English so long, they make mistakes with these words like this one, iron. We don't, we don't say the R. Well, how do I show that? We don't say the R, it's just like that, iron. This one, if you're having a fight, not many people use these for a fight nowadays, but it's a, it's a kind of weapon. Sword, silent, W. What about this one? When you buy something in the shop, they give you a receipt, no P. Uh, also, I should mention about this word that very often people confuse it with recipe. 
recipes to do with cooking. That's meant to be some. That's meant to be something you cook with. I don't know why. That's the worst drawing in the world. Anyway, recipe is to do with cooking, and receipt is to do with buying things. And um, this word subtle. It means something that is difficult to notice, a detail that, you know, you may miss because it's difficult to notice. Subtle, silent B, not subtle or something like that. Let's look at words that not, are not mispronounced, they're just not words. So um, we'll talk about why. So we've got interpretate, similar to, oh, it's not going to fit there, is it? Interpretation, interpretation, or the verb is interpret, interpret. So I can see where that comes from. It's not actually a word, a lot of people make that mistake. What about impossible? When we make words to show the opposite. Sometimes we use um, sometimes we use um, un, sometimes we use dis, sometimes we use im. Um, so that one's just a case of people using the wrong prefix on the word. Should be impossible, impossible. Something is impossible, you can't do it. And next example, unhonest. Again, the same kind of mistake. We don't say unhonest, we actually use dis in this case. Someone is a dishonest person, is a liar, bad liar, dishonest person. Which brings me to the last one. A lot of people make a mistake with this because we, maybe you don't, yeah, we use the prefix im with p words. So it's another im example, impolite, which brings me back to the fact of something I said earlier. I didn't want to be impolite when I was talking about this word, uh, prostate, because um, it's a gland, um, something up here in a man, and you can, you can get problems with it. So, um, yeah, so that's why people make mistakes sometimes. They say prostrate problems, not prostate, prostate, okay? So, um, commonly mispronounced words, we've got more in a sec. Join me for the next commonly mispronounced words. Let's have a look now at French words which have come into the English language, but because of that, we pronounce in, we pronounce them incorrectly much of the time because we don't know how to say these French words with their different pronunciation. So let's take a look at this word. This word is key, and um, this is a place where boats come. Boats come, this is a boat, believe it or not, and this is the water. Uh, boats come to the key so that they can stop and um, let off their cargo, I guess. Um, it's a little bit different to a port, but anyway, key with a K sound. When something has Q-U, it can take the K sound. People might not know how to say it when they first see that word. Moving on, a lot of French words that are in English have something to do with authority, power, military, and things like that. And that's because, um, well, I don't know why, but this is, these been, lots of the words in English come from French are to do with authority, military, and stuff like that. So what about this word? This is a, this is a rank in the military or the army. Colonel? No, it's not colonel. It's er. Uh. So even though it's olo here, it becomes er. Uh. Colonel, colonel. Sounds very different maybe to what you expect it to be. Moving on. This word gives me a little bit of pain when I see it because I remember when I was at university, I was reading something aloud to the class 
And I could see this word coming. I don't know if you're like me, if you're reading to people, you sort of see what's coming. See this word coming and I was like, oh, I'm not sure how to say it um, because I was, wasn't was sure of two pronunciations. Is it Marquis or is it Marquis? And I didn't want to read something wrong in front of my English literature class where we're all, where we're all supposed to know how to read. So anyway, I decided that I would stop and just say, oh, I'm not sure if it's Marquis or Marqui Marquis, like just to cover, you know, each option. And this girl was like, ha you don't know how to say it. Like saying as if I'm like the most stupid person in the class. And it was really mean and it was really, really upsetting. Anyway, later I went and checked it and um, found out that you can say it either way. Well, no, I found out people do say it either way, but the, the French pronunciation is marquee, whereas let's say, according to the dictionary, the standard pronunciation of that in English is marquis. So that's the, probably the kind of thing that will matter if you are in um, very aristocratic circles. If you're not, you might not, it might not be a really awful thing for you that you confuse the pronunciation of that. Moving on. Um, Viscount, and I should say this word as well, Marquis, they are um, titles that um, arist aristocracy have. Viscount, somebody, there's a man who did something, I don't know what, what they did especially, but we, we say Viscount even though it's vis here. So we don't say viscount, that's wrong. It's A-I, viscount. Moving on, um, we have different pronunciation for this word in American English and British English. It makes sense in American English because I can read the word and say it correctly. Lieutenant, okay? American English. But in English English, we need to make it a little bit more difficult. So we say lieutenant. I don't know why it comes out so different, but it's really confusing. If you want to pronounce it correctly, um, you could make a mistake there. Another lot of um, French words that we have in English are to do with restaurants. Um, that's probably because we got a lot of our food culture from France. We didn't have our own restaurant culture here. Um, and we adopted a lot of French um, um, cooking methods and things like that. So these words came into English from, uh, from French. When you go to a restaurant and you get like these little, little things to try at the beginning of your meal, they are called hors d'oeuvres, uh, singular hors d'oeuvre. Right, doesn't sound anything like the way it's written there. If you didn't, if you haven't seen that word before written down, you could get it wrong. You might say, Hors de oeuvre. Can I have some hors de oeuvre, please? And that wouldn't sound like you knew what you were doing in the restaurant. It should be hors d'oeuvre or hors d'oeuvres. Um, and lastly, let's look at the word queue. What do British people love to do? They love to queue. Love standing in a line. Wherever we go, if I see some people queuing, I just have a need to join them to get behind them, just wait there a while, see what happens. Um, because it's a QU word, it can be hard to pronounce. So again, the QU word's taking the K sound, Q, and it's just one syllable, Q. Let's take a look at this sentence I've got here. There are some uh, pronunciation errors in here. Let's have a look. Let's correct it. So I'll say it in a wrong way, and then we'll go through and we'll make some changes. The, un the unhonest Viscount bought a sword but didn't want a receipt. So how can we change that? Do you remember the word that's not a word? It's not a word, but we can say dishonest. What was wrong with Viscount? Uh, we actually use a different vowel there, it's I. What's wrong with this word? Sword, silent letter. What's wrong with this word? Receipt. Another silent letter. There you go. Um, yeah, so they're the general words that we've covered today that I'll often hear people um, mispronounce. 
If you want to follow up on this lesson, please go to the Invid site, do the quiz on this lesson. And before you go, subscribe here because you can see more of my lessons, not just on pronunciation, but other things about learning English, English words, all kinds of things. Come back soon, but for now, I'm going to use my sword and have a fight with a Viscount. Ha!